All right, guys, um, this is Brandon from 13 Market Moves, and uh, we're going to be talking about Amazon Prime, and we're going to also kind of forecast into Amazon's earnings, which is due, uh, for their Q4 earnings is due on October 22nd. So we're going to do a comprehensive analysis, and since Amazon Prime Day is just right around the corner in a couple of days, um, I wanted to go over some historical precedences and then see how we can trade Amazon Prime as well as um, how we can benefit and trade the earnings day. So without any further ado, let's get going. Okay, so all of you guys may know, what is Amazon Prime Day? Well, it's um, Amazon's attempt at recreating the Black Friday, right? And typically it occurs in um, July or June. of. So in 2015, Amazon created a day to celebrate their 20th anniversary of being in existence and surviving. As you know, Amazon had a lot of ups and downs and there was a lot of doubts, but they are not, you know, they're now a powerful juggernaut in retail space. But it wasn't always like that. So when they hit 20th anniversary without going bankrupt, they really wanted to um, reward their loyal Amazon customers as well as trying to reinvent being Amazon who, who they are. They wanted to create their own Black Friday event. So this rep represented an opportunity to profit from trading Amazon stocks and options based on historical behavior or preceding and after the Amazon Prime Day. And we're going to also add in, um, as we move on, earnings day. Now, one of the things about the Prime Day is that in 2015, they basically had um, July 15th, just one day. In 2016, it, it was on the weekend, July 16th. And then 2017, it was Monday, July the 10th, where it started. And starting in 2016, it went from one day event to two day events. 2018 and 2019 and here's the date July 15 2019 and then they started to get into the habit of releasing well look how great we did um, and these are the dates July 20th 2015 and then um, it started to get closer and closer together when their statistics were being released from their Amazon Prime Day on 16th they started releasing their statistics on the 25th and then um, July 10th 2017 they started releasing their statistics in July 12th in two only two days later and then july 16th um they released on the following couple of days on july 18th and so on and so forth and what why that's important is because it gives us the ability to look at uh, the behavior of post prime date and how we trade on this and then so we're going to go over some chart analysis and then draw some conclusions and how 13 market moves are planning to trade leading into Prime Day as well as post Prime Day and then all the way into earnings. And we'll look at some of the correlations and probabilities and uh, we'll arrive at certain conclusions so that we can make a ton of money. And so if you guys want to basically learn how to do this, make sure you click the link below somewhere on this video and um, uh, schedule your 20 minute consultation okay and with one of our senior traders all of our senior traders um, definitely trade every day they're very knowledgeable and um, you know who knows you, you know you're, you're at the very least it's free and you're gonna learn something right now one of the things that we did this is our proprietary data collection and uh, we basically created our own um, graph here and one of the graphs that I want you to pay attention to is that in 2015 and this is represented in um, uh, gross revenue in billions. So 0.42 means they did $420 million in 2015. Not bad for starting out, right? And then in 2016, they had a 26% overall increase. Um, and so they increased about to $530 million. But by 2017, it was a big milestone because guess what? Look at this blue line going up. They did a billion dollars in sales, which represented about 88%. 88.6%, which was a big deal. I mean, sales are skyrocketing. Um, they're becoming a major powerhouse. I mean, a lot of the retails would just salivate and just envy um, Amazon for the juggernaut that they are. So by 2018, they jumped. I mean, this is an exponential jump um, to 400, 
4.2 billion dollars in sales which represented 320 percent but look what's happening since then 2019 i mean the growth is still there i mean they did 5.8 billion dollars in sales which is significant but the rate of growth is declining now they're now stabilizing at 38.10 percent so this represents kind of saturation in the sales market and things like that and so one of the things that we are postulating for 2020 potentially is that sure coronavirus probably will help since this is one of those stocks that basically is the darling of at home stay at home type of retail ordering uh, phenomenon however we also believe that the consumers are tapped down and without the stimulus we think that this number uh, may come in a little bit lower or it may disappoint and so this year instead of having amazon prime day in july they also moved it to october 13 to 14 sorry not 12 okay so it's going to be tuesday to wednesday right and for all of you fans out there so basically why was that done that way it was because of the pandemic they basically realized that potentially by this time that's what i'm thinking and that's what 13 market moves is thinking is that um jeff bezos and the company basically decided that well by october surely we should get the stimulus part two right did we get that yet no i mean it doesn't mean that they won't pass anything but just judging by the way uh the trump administration and uh, the congress are going back and forth i'm not sure when that's going to happen and it's happening in a couple of days I do know that American consumers are tapped out, and we'll see how this works out, but I'm not so keen on the fact that this will actually be a record-breaking quarter. So if they release their numbers or there's any rumors that uh, Prime Day may not be good, is that we will go over our strategies on how we're going to play this price action. And we don't want to front-run things, but we're going to let things uh, basically, based on our research and correlations and our statistical analysis, uh, we're going to show you how to trade this real quick. So on July 15, 2015, statistics were reported about five days later. Now that number, as we talked about, is being reported closer and closer. And basically, we think that that number may be out after the 14th or maybe the 15th. Um, but regardless, it's not going to be five days before they come out. But this is what we've noticed is that leading up into their very first prime day um, after the announcement they ran up into the prime day by denoted by this arrow so prime day was um, july 15 2015 actually on the day of prime day it kind of sold off and then it started to run up into amazon prime day statistics which was released on 7 2015 and a funny thing happened it basically remember this is july this is not um, october like it is today Okay. okay, so it's not that. It's July. And so they reported the statistics, and then three days later, they reported earnings. Remember, Amazon reports typically on Thursdays after hours. And so it kind of sold off again. So we basically have this um, sell-off um, um, behavior. Okay, and we'll look at the other um, charts um, to see if there's a correlation. Now, we know that Amazon basically, after their prime days, and especially in July, has a negative bias. Even if it gaps up, which is a bullish uh, price action here. Let me erase all this. It basically gaps up and then sells off. Okay, so now this is a classic case of short to top. Okay, and you can continue to do that basically throughout the next three days um, if you just wanted to trade it intraday. Okay, and so sell off after statistics are released so this is kind of the behavior that we noticed on 2015 and you'll notice that this behavior persists in most of the cases the big story here is that earnings are released shortly after the prime day if it was released in july but this year it's in october so that put, kind of puts a damper on this right well basically this is an earnings gap and crap short to bounce post earnings right so bullish uptrend at least one week prior to the prime day was noticed right this is a bullish update uptrend leading into the prime day and then it sell the news after the stats are released okay remember at this time amazon was basically trading at 495 and so if it dropped um you know to 475 ish like in this price range that still was a big deal i mean who wouldn't want to take this right this is thursday here here's uh, wednesday i mean that's still um if you're a good intraday trader has a lot of meat on the bones right so that's 
number one thing that we noticed. Okay, so let's move on to 2016. So what happened in 2016? Well, 2016, what we have is a situation, again, um, prior to about one, one and a half week leading up into the prime day, it basically rallied hard in July, and then it sold off. And um, leading into the prime day, it also sold off on day one, but it occurred on the weekend. So this is the weekend right here, okay? So leading into it, um, the 15th was the Friday, and then this is the following Monday, okay? So the, it sold off and basically, you know, wasn't able to capture the top and only um, took half of this um, candle width and then proceeded to run up, okay? So remember, they, start, they reported the statistics five days later, okay, right here. And it basically popped a little bit, but you know, you can see a black candle and popped and then proceeded to sell off. Again, two years in a row where that phenomenon existed. And then it ran up one day into the earnings. They re released it, earnings on that day. Remember, they report after hours. And then what happened? Um, well, they popped, but then again, it sold off. And then the next day it popped again, you could sell off. And then it just decided to do a two day sell off regardless. In July, if you short the top and if you just bag your profits, it, it's very lucrative. We also have a behavior here that every time the stats are announced, there is a hype leading up into the prime. Okay, In this situation, um, after the prime day, there is this hype that it was going to be blockbuster, and it was, and they sold the news. Okay, Again, earnings were positive and gap up but craps out on the day and it continues to do that. You just short the tops and basically that's what happened. Short the earnings bounce, but 2016 was a bit tricky because um, after the earnings uh, were reported, there was two days of rally and then it sold off. But if you were to short the tops, just every, every time it stalls out at the tops, you made money, you made money, and then you made money each, each, each one of those days. So let's see what happens in 2017. Well, in 2017, it's a similar scenario, right? Um, basically, in this situation, another one week of downtrend followed by uh, three days prior to leading up into Amazon Prime Day, it runs up. And in, during those two days of Prime Day, it basically has a pretty bullish but sideways movement. And then the statistics are released the, you know, the day after the Prime Day ends. Remember, this was a two-day event, right? And then what happens? Okay, I mean, it's not a significant thing, but you, if you short the top on the st day that statistics are released, basically you can cover the next day or that same day and slightly volatile downside action, right? We can make money on that. And then it resumes the bullish uptrend, okay? So what happens in the first week of July 27th, 2017? So it's now going to be playing for the earnings. So they, they had a really good statistics that was released, okay? We went over those numbers. They're going, wow, we broke a uh, billion dollars. It's gonna be awesome. The earnings are gonna go skyrocket. So then it just takes off, right? So what actually happens? Well, let's find out. What happens is here's the um, Amazon Prime Day, okay, and it basically starts to run up into the earnings. Here's the uh, Prime Day results, which led to a decline in price, and then but promptly resumes earnings, okay. So typically it does run up into the earnings, and then what happened on the day that they reported earnings, Amazon earnings on the 27th, what happens? You short the top. Okay, remember, it reports um, earnings after hours on fr Thursday, which means on Friday, it gaps down a little bit, right? It basically um, opens and then just rallies higher and then closes down, right? So it opens here, comes back down here, and then rallies back up. And so basically, what you can do is we can wait for a uh, retracement. As long as it doesn't go above a certain level, you can short the top and then swing it over into Monday or um, into the Friday. But on Monday, you have another opportunity to short this, okay? But regardless, it was a bearish uh, price movement down. And we'll figure out um, how to do this and enter our trades. But again, there is a common uh, denominator that keeps forming here. We are basically leading up 
into um, Amazon Prime Day and there's a sell-off. And then after the Amazon Prime Day, um, there is an anticipatory run-up that occurs um, as long as the numbers are good. But there's always a sell-off, whether big or small, there's still an opportunity there. Okay, now let's go look into what happens on the 2018th Prime Day. So in the 2018 Prime Day, same thing. This time it runs up into the Prime Day. Everybody, well, they did a billion dollars last year, right? So, um, F, so surely this year they're going to blow their socks off. And they did. They did $4.2 billion, right? Okay, now it's like the growth is in the $320,000. It's $4.2 percent I mean, that's something to be excited about. So then basically it runs up into that excitement. But then st statistics are released and it's a sell, sell the news. Again, so what's the common theme here? Run up into Prime Day. When the stats are released, the day after, just short it. Okay, there's, there's two days of Amazon Prime Day. Just short the top and then write it down. And then it runs into earnings release. Okay, after hours it re reports earnings. Okay, now the, here's a bearish price action. And then it pops, opens up here and basically sells off, right? It basically runs up and then sells right off and then has a three days worth of sell off. Now this is July. The question that we're going to answer is that is there a correlation between Amazon Prime Day or is this more of the Q3, uh, Q4 issue? Because this year, the Amazon Prime is in Q4 earnings release, not Q3. Okay, And generally, Amazon has a tendency in July to sell off um, after a big pop and selling off and retracing most of those earnings and then being bearish. But, you know, basically, again, it runs up into the Prime Day. Everyone's excited because they're anticipating the 400 4.2 billion dollars of revenue and then when the that's actually released they sell it okay sell the news okay that's what we're gonna do this week so what happens in 2019 I mean everybody is super excited and again it's running up everyone knows that they did 4.2 billion last year surely it's gonna be something higher than that and they did 320 percent increase they're probably expecting a you know <laughs> something similar but Prime Day happens and you see kind of, you know, it's stalling out. It's not really pushing above. It just stalls out and stats are released. Okay. So again, after the first day, you short that and then in anticipation of the stat release the following day and it sells off. And in fact, if you were just intraday trading, look at this ranges here. I mean, by this time, it was a $2,000 stock. I mean, it's at least a $40 range, okay? If you short it from here, it's 2030 all the way down to the bottom of that channel, 1950, almost 100 bucks, $80 move. I'll take that for a dollar, right? And then in a choppy fashion, right, it runs up into the earnings. They release the earnings and they sell the crap out of it again. But remember, is this related to... Um, Amazon Prime Day? Is this why July is so bearish regardless of what S&P 500 does? Or is it a function of Prime, Amazon Prime Day? And that is something that we need to figure out. Okay. Now, what happened is in this situation, it only went up like 32%, right? I mean, growth, I mean, 4.6 billion to 5.2 or 8 billion is huge, but it's only a 32%. There's a deceleration in the top line growth. And so that's what caused this um, sell-off here because they're saying, wait a minute, maybe the consumers are tapped out. And I can tell you right now, consumers are tapped out. Okay, And there's no stimulus check coming anytime soon for this round of um, Amazon Prime Day. You see where I'm going at with this? Now, all right, so you made it this far back. Um, this is some awesome proprietary research that you know we put countless hours in doing so that we can help you make money, right? So uh, the conclusion here is the takeaway points are literally, there is a 95% probability of earnings being shortable for excellent profit potential in July, right? But what about October? And we'll go over that next. There's a 65% probability of shortable post Prime Day um, price action, meaning that there is going to be a good maybe uh, 3x to 6x potential um, if we short post Prime Day in anticipation of them selling the news, which has been the case for Amazon Prime. Unless Amazon posts like a $10 billion sales for the year, I mean, I just don't see how that's going to happen. Okay. 
Now, typically earnings are on Thursday, so options premium is optimal, especially if you're per, uh, playing the earnings, but we're not playing July this year. We're playing October, but this aspect remains the same. Conclusion, earnings post prime days will lead to money if they report on July. And is that going to continue for October in Q4? Remember, this is Q3, okay? So stay tuned, okay? We also know there's decelerating prime growth sales since 2018 will likely continue into 2020, especially this year. So the question is, are they going to get a pass because of the COVID? Or are they going to freak out because the consumers, if it turns out to be true that the consumers are dead and um, they're not buying because, you know, Amazon has run up. Uh, they're one of the at-home beneficiaries along with Zoom and Peloton, right? So I'm not going to spend too much time on Amazon um, earnings. I mean, they're usually excellent. Okay, the only one part um, year that they really uh, disappointed was um, right here. They thought that was a disappointment in um, uh, Q2. Okay, but they got a pass because of the COVID, right? <laughs> so these are all the numbers. But leading up into that, Amazon has done really, really well. They really have not disappointed the um, the numbers, except in um, always in Q2, they're seasonally weak. But if you look at here, because this is what I want us to focus on now, is because on October months, okay, is typically hit or miss. Okay, you can have, it's never been really, really great. And, um, you know, this is the, this is the month, this is the quarter in which Amazon is, you know, um, doesn't have a lot of huge predictive value. But this year we have the prime and we may have that headwinds going into it. And um, I think the earning is on the 22nd of October. And I think they're going to release the prime numbers and stats probably by the 15th or the 16th, October 16th of this year, um, this month, right? Which is a few days away. Let's look at some price action. Okay, so Amazon in Q3 2020, in July 3rd, basically we had a um, sell-off into the earnings. And um, this is the Q3. And um, price rises for five days prior to earnings, right? Okay, so it's going to sell off into the earnings like a week before. And then for the next five days, it begins to rise. And this is kind of rhyming with what's going on right now also. And then basically um, they report the earnings you short the gap and coming down for two days in a row you get a pretty decent 32.50 all the way down to like uh, uh about 30 let's say 3100 okay 32.50 3100 that's a 150 point move in two days okay here's um earnings release friday i mean this is when the option premiums are so cheap you just short the top you made a ton of money and then you can do it again on monday with all the money you made okay and then it basically ran up. So it does mirror the price actions of previous June to July Q3 earnings, right? Is it, again, the question is, is it because of earnings or is it Prime Day influence? But this year, the Prime Day was moved to October 13th, 2014. So this shows that there's some seasonality independent of Prime, okay? So I don't see a correlation between the Prime. I think this is a Q3 seasonality. So what does that mean? Going, let's look at the uh, 2000 um, Amazon Daily 2019 Q4 October 24, 2019 chart because that's what we're really interested in, right? What happened in 2019 and what, what was uh, the S&P 500 doing? So basically, it rose for four days post October 13, 2019 and then it sells off four days leading into earnings. The question this year is that we're probably going to get a sell-off leading into you know at least uh, three or four days because um, there's about 65 to 95% correlation that we are going to sell off um, after the stats are released for Amazon Prime. And then um, we start this week as October 12th, tomorrow's Columbus Day, by, by the way. Okay. And then we report earnings next Thursday. So we think that we're going to have run up into basically the um, Prime. After the numbers are released, we're going to correct into it and probably move sideways, and then we're going to report earnings. So in October, what happened was they reported earnings, had a fairly bullish price action, and guess what happened? It opened, it gapped down, opened here, and then it started rising up, and then had a super bullish price action that way. Okay, 
So why was that the case? And um, as you'll see, and keep a mental note of this, 2019, uh, we had a pretty bullish October month. Um, it was on an uptrend. And so um, we're going to start seeing the theme that if the S&P 500 and ES is in an uptrend and it's bullish on that prior day's earning and it, it um, goes up, even if they report bad numbers and it gaps down, it's to be bought. Okay, so that's number one in 2019. So what happens in 2019 on 60 minutes? Well, just like what I said, it comes down here, basically it gaps down, significant big, big gap, right? And it basically stalls out, um, doesn't go any further. So it behooves us you know, to not jump to the conclusion that it's gonna further go down. Let's see if it stalls out and then see some volume coming in and then um, deter make a determination. Do we short or do we go long? But really, if the SPX or ES is on an uptrend and it's pretty bullish, it, it probably makes sense for you to be able to short the uh, um, buy the calls here in anticipation of a significant bullish action. Because if you bought at 1695 and then sold this thing by the end of the day at 1761, or better yet, this is Friday, remember, at 11 if you sold this at 1765, Okay, by what? 11 o'clock. Get in at 9.30 and sell by 11 o'clock and or stair-step your way out. Whatever floats your boat. You know, if you like to make um, like 75, 80-point move um, within a few hours, just imagine what the um, options are going to do for you. Okay? Remember, short, short the rip and buy the dips, depending on um, the market conditions in Q4. And... Um, and now we have the prime day um, interspersed with this year. Okay, so let's go to 2018 and um, what happens. Um, so in this situation, again, it corrects into the earnings, right? Hits that top. And then eight days of bearish price action. And the day prior, there is a pretty significant bearish price action. Why is that? Well, in 2018, I don't know if you know, but I made a ton of money shorting the market from um, end of September to December, right? Everyone thought this is it. Um, the market's never going to come back. And um, just when everybody was supposed to do that, and Trump came out and said, well, it might be a good time to buy stocks. I don't know if you remember that, but he did that. And um, basically, um, that's what happened, right? But 2018 was super bit bearish in October. I mean, it was downright scary. And it basically popped a prior day into earnings because everyone's anticipating this great um, earnings report, and they did. Um, the day after, on the 26th, which is Friday, it basically you know, opened here and then ran up and then decided to run all the way down and then finish right here. And then on Monday, the following day, um, you know, you could have had a very bearish price action. Again, let's SPX be your guide in Q4 for um, Amazon. There is an absolute correlation, and I'm going to show you that. But it doesn't last forever. Amazon will bottom out, and you'll be able to see that. We have other proprietary indicators that we use. We'll know that this will um, bottom out, and we can take a ride up. And, and basically for the next few days as a relief rally. But notice, okay, it never gets above the high lows of the break, this breakdown candle, okay? So it basically stalls out and continues this downward trend. We'll just deal with that right now. This is for earnings in October, okay? Now, let's go into the 60 minute situation, okay? So what we have is a um, earnings report on the 25th, very bullish price action, right, the day before. And then here's the lows of the day and it just goes right up. Look what happens, it gaps down significantly. If the ES or SPX or SPY or whatever you wanna call it is bearish, you know, it might not be a bad idea, especially in this um, um, uptrending thing, to take a little gander and um, uh, front run the earnings. I don't like doing this, but in this situation, for this example, you would have made a ton of money by shorting at 1790 and then selling out at well, like six, almost $1,600. That's $190 move. Okay. Um, obviously, the IVs are going to be pumped, but you know, this far out of the move, if you basically even caught the 120 out of the move money, I mean, it would have been like three or four bucks in premium, right? So basically, that's kind of 
what you can play, but you know, being prudent as we are, you short the top and get in right around 1670 and then sell it at 1600. I mean, that's 70 point move in the first hour. Are you kidding me? And then if you want to be adventuresome, get, get in again. <laughs> okay. Um, but one of the things that pops up though, major reversal, because this is running up. Okay, if you didn't short that, it basically the trend was up. But we knew that there is this um, line right here. If you waited until 1 p.m. to reshort it, after, remember, this is Friday. By 1 p.m., all of these things, as it's running up, the puts are cheap. Okay, with all the money you made in the beginning, if you shorted it here and then front ran it and made the money or you did it here, you can put some money into here at 1 o'clock. And usually that's common theme is that there is a price reversal at 1 o'clock. If you catch that in, in about an hour, I mean, you can catch a $53 worth of move. I mean, I can tell you right now, near the money uh, contracts are probably running at four or five bucks. And then you catch a 53, that's almost 10 X, right? Don't worry, we'll have all of this ready, but I just want you to see the price dynamics and what's going on in uh, 2018, right? So are you excited yet? If you want to learn how to do this, click the link below, man. Okay, so let's go. Let's see what happens in 2017, okay? Because I want to go this far back. Again, what happens is um, in 2017 was a year there, you know, Amazon was having some issues, significant bearish price action, and then it kind of stalls out, okay? And then after they report earnings, because people are so bearish, it gaps up and then it just goes, okay? For basically, you know, the next five days. So um, again, if it, one of the common theme is that if it gaps up and it doesn't break down and it kind of stalls out here and then starts to move up on heavy volume, you got to buy calls here. Okay. And again, let your ES or SPX be your guide, S&P 500, right? If it's bullish, Amazon's going to move it. Significant bullish spy and ES price action on this day. Okay. Even though Amazon was super bearish, it was a bear trap, right? If the people are too bearish, you know, people that already sold, already sold it. Okay, you're going to, you know, the smart money was buying calls into this. Okay, and make sure you watch that options chain and see if there was a significant call buying activity. I don't have it in this, but yes, there was. People were buying the crap out of these 1100s and they're buying the crap out of 1075s. Okay, calls on this day. Okay, but that's what we do all day. We can figure that out for you. Okay, so let's see what happens on the 60 minute chart. Okay, on the 60 minute flat, right? We have some flatness going in and then gaps and then it goes. Okay, it, buy it as it stalls or you can basically let it confirm. If it doesn't go up, it's going to do this. Even if you bought it here and it doesn't break below the prior highs, you can still go. Okay. But regardless, when Amazon starts to gap and go, it's basically, you know, gaps up nearly 100 bucks and runs another 40. So if you bought, again, earnings prior to that, and you knew that ES was um, very, very positive, okay, and it's very bullish, okay, you might want to consider doing this, okay, especially this time of the year. Now, let's do some analysis here because um, I know I'm saying all of these things. So what is this correlation that we're talking about, right? Well, the correlation is the following. Um, this year, we you, everyone remembers this. I made, We made a ton of money, okay? And we called this. Leo called this top, right? Now, let's go back. And it seems to me that Amazon seems to alternate from um, bullish Q4 uh, price, from bullish to bearish, bullish to bearish, okay? You see something happening here? I went all the way back to 2014, and this, there's a pattern here. So... What else did I find here? Okay, we had this. Um, this is um, 2018, which is very bearish here, right? This was actually a pretty significant sell-off at the beginning of the year. So one of the things that I'm finding out at, at the beginning of the year, between January to like March, you get a significant sell-off. This was downright pretty scary. Then it was followed by additional S&P 500 in October. I know things aren't exactly the same, but it rhymes, right? Um, so basically, it ran up, recovered. Well, we ran up here, and then now we're kind of at that inflection point. And we think that um, we're going to have another bearish price action coming up shortly here, right? Um, because when you look at it, Amazon had a bullish price action here. Look, there, yeah, it kind of had a bearish 
tend to it, but it was nothing impulsive like this. Nothing impulsive like this. Okay. In fact, on the years that Amazon is bullish, look at what happens on uh, January to March and leading up into June. It's bullish. Look at this right here. Okay, on this bullish price action, it's bullish. Okay, it didn't do one of these things. It didn't do one of these things like that, right? So we have that correlation. Okay, and we have a, enough statistical probability that it will repeat those price action. It's election year. The market's all over the place. This is just basically going to be absolutely crazy. And we think that there is another price action that's going to be pretty bearish and corrective coming up shortly here. Okay, so I know I said a mouthful. Make sure you understand what we're talking about here. Okay, okay. October Q4 alternates bullish bearish bullish bearish bullish bearish and we believe that you know that will continue so let's look into the other aspects of it so let's look at amazon um and why spx is highly correlated with amazon q4 earnings and then uh, price action so we're looking at amazon right now from um, july to october so basically what we have is a situation um, from July on. Here's our July earnings. Okay, gap and crap right here. We are um, now in that phase where it's going to run up into uh, the prime, which is a couple more days away, right? And then we expect um, by Thursday or so, <clears throat> stats are going to come out by second day. So Tuesday and Wednesday. So if, um, at, on Wednesday, it might be a, not a bad idea to front run and buy some puts. Or wait until the stats are released because then we will correct into it and then it'll probably run up into earnings a little bit and then earnings will probably be good it'll probably gap and then crap if it dips if gaps down and it kind of stalls out okay give it some time you got to buy calls so what we have is <clears throat> we have a bullish price action it broke out of this channel here okay so those of you that caught that when you see a basically channel forming like this and it breaks out you gotta buy it okay it's also found support at the 50-day moving average we go buy some calls now the question is just like in july because prime is always released on july and we basically have a lot of gap and craps right we gap up and then we crap back down that price action are we going to have that this time is there any uh, correlation and my answer right now is that the prime day action what are two independent results the thing that's going to drive is our es and s p 500 price action leading up into earnings uh, not earnings elections this is election year october 22nd when it's um scheduled to report <clears throat> geez um elections like literally 10 days 11 days away from there so there's going to be some jitters i guarantee you this market's going to get volatile what do we do then how do we take advantage of this? I know I said a lot, and uh, but you know we do these great research, and uh, I'm very proud of what we do at 13 Market Moves. Here's a conclusion of, of the Q4 earnings on Amazon. Is there a correlation to pa uh, Prime Day and pattern? In July there is, but you know we also saw that um, this year it behaved exactly the same without the uh, Prime Day. So is it really all that's cracked up to be or is this an isolated event where you short the, uh, the second day of prime um, by calls leading up into it and then short it into second day of prime and then catch a couple of days of uh, moderate price move down on Thursday and Friday when the options are cheaper and then go buy calls uh, leading up into earnings. Okay, It remains to be seen how Amazon reacts since this year prime day is in Q4, not Q3. There may be a correlation. I'm not so sure. There is 65 correlation on selling Amazon short one day after Prime Day event. I mean, that is the reason why it's 65% because there's some variability in um, the magnitude of the moves. But generally, it will be uh, lucrative because Amazon Prime is on Tuesday and Wednesday. They'll probably report the statistics on Thursday and you can short it and um, into Thursday and then um, play around with it on Friday when, when it starts to sell off. Okay, so short the statistics announcement. Q4 earnings are highly correlated to ES or S&P 500. That's, we just showed you that on the chart. If it's bullish with an uptrend, even if it gaps down, you buy the lows, buy the calls, okay? You buy the calls, okay, if it gaps down. If it's bullish here 
and it's on a bullish uptrend, you buy the calls. Please, calls, calls. Don't short the hole. If the yes S&P 500 is bearish, though, you short the, even if it gaps up, you short the top and down. Even if it gaps down, as long as, you know, you remain a little patient, it might be a good idea to wait like maybe 20 to 30 minutes and see what it really wants to do and then short it. Trust me, if it starts to go, this thing's going to go and blow pretty hard. Okay, so a significant sell-off uh, beginning of the year will lead to a bearish Q4 price. I've already showed you that on the um, S&P 500. We'll get into that more later on a separate video. But this year is different. Prime Day is not in July, but it's in October, which is Q4. We're in Q4, guys. Okay, is there really a correlation? I just showed you this July without the Prime Day. It behaved exactly the same as the other July Q3 earnings. What does that mean? Q4, watch the S&P 500 and then act accordingly, okay? It will run up into earnings like it always does. It will not go down. And then the other thing is um, you basically short. You basically short this. You just basically short um, after the stats are released for two to three days. And I think you'll do between 300 to 500%. Not bad, okay? Okay. So how to trade the prime week? We talked about it. I'm beating this to death, right? You buy calls through the first day of the prime day, let it run up, and anticipate 95 to $165 upside starting tomorrow, right? You buy in anticipation. So Monday, you go buy some calls and then sell by Wednesday and then go short, okay? Buy puts after prime day is finished, then prime day stats are announced for two-day swing trade to the downside. It, there's a 95% correlation probability that's going to happen. Is it always going to happen? It's going to rhyme. Um, we're pretty confident that it will. Um, so now, how do we trade the Q4 Amazon earnings? Jesus Christ, Brian, <laughs> what did you do here, right? <laughs> so if S&P 500 is weak and in a downtrend, then trade with a bearish bias and intraday trade for a DTR average of about $65. If S&P 500 is strong and in an uptrend, this is average by the way, swing trade three days prior to earnings day, right? If it's in an uptrend, swing trade it, right? If S&P is strong, then you buy the dips or you basically um, buy the calls. Q4 earnings day, reports after hours. If it's strong, expect 75 probability of a big gap down right followed by intraday reversal throughout the day right okay if it's a what is what what am i talking about here if basically on the q um, q4 earnings day if the stock is moving up this is the other part okay there is a 75 percent correlation if the leading up into earnings there's a bullish price action to the upside remember this reports after hours on that earnings day after hours prior to that if it moves 75 percent there's a probability there's going to be a gap down followed by intraday reversal okay, throughout the day, and S&P 500 is strong. Q4 earnings day has a negative price action, okay, meaning that if it sells off on that day and stock was selling off prior five days, expect a 65% probability of a bullish gap up, and then it continues to go, as long as S&P 500 is bullish, ES is bullish. On the Q4 earnings day, if it has a negative price action, stock is bullish on earnings day, expect a gap down and continuation, okay? And S&P 500 is bearish. S&P 500 price action is the key, guys. Okay, you got to look at that S&P 500. If it's bullish and there's a lot of impulsivity to it, if the futures and S&P 500 indexes are rising on good volume, expect Amazon to rally no matter where the stock starts out. If it gaps down, it doesn't matter. You buy calls then. Year 2020 has an 85% correlation that it will have a negative price action due to the crash in February or March. I just showed you that on S&P 500. Plus, we think that there's a negative bias in Amazon post earnings because it alternates every year. Okay, and I showed you that. Okay, so review the weekly SPX chart. Okay, so if, um, what I want to do is I want to go back. Let's go here. Okay. Let's look at this again, all right? February to March was not bearish. Then we get a um, Amazon bullish price action, right? This is fairly bearish right here. This was pretty bad year, okay? It runs up and it corrects and then S&P 500 corrects, Amazon has a bearish price action, okay? Same thing here, 
2017. Okay, February to March was fairly bullish, right? We get bullish price action. But what happened in 2018, we had a pretty sizable correction. There was some fear of God here. Rallies just like this year and then falls off. Amazon bearish price action. Alternates, right? See that? F February to March, bullish. Bullish Amazon price action. Okay, then what happened this year? We had a significant fall off in March. We thought the world was ending and then mother of all uh, rips. And now we're kind of at that point. The question is, what's going to happen? We think based on these precedences, it'll run up into earnings and into prime and then it'll gap down. Okay, we think we're, there's going to be by October 22nd, um, a downtrend uh, firmly in place that's going to be pretty impulsive. So let's see what happens. We'll trade either way, but this is kind of our bias that we have right now. Okay, so I know I talked a lot. I'm losing my voice, but I wanted to make sure that everybody understands. Okay, this is the Amazon chart that I, t I showed you. Okay, so um, hi, what we want to do is, um, you know, watch this video, write, uh, take notes. If you have any questions, click the link below, schedule a 20 minute um, consultation with our um, senior traders and let's rock this man um, we have an uh, opportunity to a double and quadruple dip on this okay play the er, um, call side on the Amazon leading up into Prime Day starting tomorrow and then let's short this on Thursday on after the second day of Amazon Prime Day and wait for the statistics we think that we're gonna have a pretty lucrative um, price action but you know let's see let's see what happens and then um, about 10 days later we're gonna have our earnings right about seven to eight days later, we're going to have our earnings, and we think that's going to be bearish. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening to me. This is 13 Market Moves. My name is Brandon. Um, this is your Amazon earnings, and I hope this helped. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Do you know what is actually the best day of the week to day trade and why? I'm about to show you something that most of day traders don't even dream about. And what all the trading gurus, coaches, and experts think is absolutely impossible. Now, the reason why they think that is because they all learn the same courses on trading, like basic stuff like trade the trend, guys. That's not going to make you any money. So if you're tired of your account going nowhere, if you're tired of losing money, pay attention. Now, I'm super busy trading, so I'm actually going to have Monica walk you through details. Now, all the experts will tell you, don't trade on Fridays. Why? Because they've been taught and conditioned to think that. Because they don't know the secrets that I know. I'm about to reveal to you that exactly the opposite is true. The only day you want to day trade is on Friday. Check out some of my recent Friday trades. 1,000 to 4,300. 2,000 to 26,000. 2,000 to 53,000 day trading, 4,000 to 63,000 day trading, 4,000 to 144,000 dollars in under eight hours day trading. The reason why they don't think this is possible is because they don't know what I know and what my students know. Now check out my students, 195,000 in day trading profits recently. 356,000 in trading profits recently. If you've been going to countless webinars, trying to learn how to trade, if you've been taking courses where everybody's teaching you the same stuff over and over again, no wonder why your account is stuck. No wonder why you're trading the stock. Guys, if you're tired of sales pitches, countless webinars, and all the same stuff that everybody's trying to teach you when it comes to day trading and swing trading, let me show you how real trading is done. Watch me trade live right now, 4K to 63K in under nine hours. All trades are triple verified by independent agencies. Stop wasting time doing the same thing over and over again. Stop the excuses. This is real. This is possible. Let me show you how you can learn the formula that can allow you to trade like this. If you're ready to take your trading game to the next level, let's roll. Click the link somewhere around this video. Click the button somewhere around this video and watch now or forever regret not knowing the secrets that could have finally taken your trading game to the ultimate victory in a Super Bowl of trading.
Let's roll. Ready to take your trading skills to the next level, guys. Let's do this. I'm going to have Monica take it over from here on the next page make sure don't be shy say hi to monica she is ready to reveal the secrets of trading like a rock star just click the watch now button be nice to her don't be flirting now click the watch now button and let the show begin